Boston wrestling is fake news. Monty and the Pharaoh's son, Tony Atlas, here on this Halloween week that All I right. need to answer. This first question comes from Robbie Lizzie. Robbie Lizzie. And he wants to know, did Bruiser Brody bring everything that happened on himself? Did Brody bring being murdered on himself? Hell no. Hell no. There is nothing. The Bible said, thou shalt not take that that thou can give. What reason can you think of to take a man from his family? What reason can you think of to murder a man and kill the territory of Carlos Cologne that gave, gave all of us wrestlers a paid vacation? There was nothing so bad that couldn't be worked out verbally. No, that, that's almost sad for someone to think like that Brody brought his killing on himself. Hell no, he was trying to make a living for his family. What Brody was trying to do, he was going to buy into the territory. He was miles and miles away from his home trying to feed his family. Before he died, he asked Carlos Colon, take care of my family. He died with the picture of his son in his hand. When I took him to the hospital, he held that picture. They took me into the emergency room. He held that picture. They operated on him. They couldn't get that picture out of his hand. I, I can't believe somebody ever asked me that. What reason can you think of to murder a person? What reason for a murder? He didn't have no weapons. Yeah, he was a big, strong guy. He he kicked the shit out of a lot of people. I beat up a lot of people. That don't mean y'all 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 could shoot. Could give me two eight inch cuts across my stomach, miles and miles away from my home, leaving my wife and son. I listened to you. Ask that of his son. Dark side of the ring. I cried when I hear his son. He said, "Everybody got a bruise and Brody story, but me." How would you like to be Bruiser Brody's son? And everybody talking about you. And they have nothing to do, nothing. You know nothing about your father. And he was doing it for his son. He didn't want to wrestle his whole life. He was in his, you know, he was in his early 40s. He wanted to get on the promotion end of it. He wanted to, you know, buy into a territory and be a promoter where he could spend more time with his wife and family. He was trying to get out of the ring. He died trying to be with his family. If he brought anything on himself, what he brought on himself was trying to leave the business. That cost him his life. 
If he had went all along with the program and just rationalized old and gray and beat up like me, he'd probably be living today. But he, but he tried to make a big move to improve his life where he didn't have to travel up and down the highway anymore. He wanted to be home with his family. That's all he talked about every time I went, Brody. My son, my son, my son. In fact, that's what he asked me to do before he died. He saw me drawing a picture of Mark and Jay Youngblood, who was also there. He said, Tony, that's great. Can you do a picture? Do a picture of my uh do a picture of my son. You know? I said, yeah. I said, we're going to be here for a week. I said, I have it done. I said, I've been in Mark and Jay Youngblood. Mark and Jay Youngblood is Rick Romero's son. You know, yep. Romero. Yeah, Rick Romero. And I said, yeah, I have it done before. I said, give me the picture. He reached and gave me the picture. Jose come along and said, Brody, can I talk to you, please? Brody turned and said, yes. Real nice. They both were nice. Nobody expected a damn thing. Brody walked into the into the shower. This is what I hear. Yeah. Yeah, just like that. I looked up, Brody was bent over, Jose had a knife in the air like this, I reached in, grabbed Brody to pull him back, and freaking intestine wrapped around my arm. When I laid him down, I had to not rip his intestines. I pulled his intestines off my freaking arm. How can the hell can you bring that to yourself because somebody got pissed off at you? I got pissed off at a lot of wrestlers. A lot of wrestlers got pissed off at me. A lot of people get pissed off at me. I don't want you putting a freaking knife in my belly because I say something you don't like. That's retarded shit, man. No, Brody did not deserve to die. I can't think of anybody. Well, I know some people deserve to die, you know, but not not Brody. Not for a disagreement in, in a rest in a dressing room. Come on now. Thank you for your question anyway. What's with the next one, Larry? All right. The next one is from 1980 Triumph. And he wants to know, will you address what your stepdaughter spoke about? <laughs> yes, I will. Oh, uh, let me see how how can I put this? When you marry a woman with kids, when I first met Monica, she lived by herself. And I said, Monica. Why are you living by yourself? You having a kid? She says, yes, I got a daughter. Now, her daughter lived in one apartment. Her mother lived in another apartment. Her mother worked every day, all day long. Monica, that's my wife. The daughter was on welfare. The daughter had two kids. The state of Maine took them two kids from the daughter for neglect and abuse. State record, check it out yourself. She lost him to care, drove Monica nuts. Monica went through hell and high water trying to get the kids back. One child name was Alex. I used to take Alex to the gym. I used to take him fishing. Me and Alex were buddy. The other kid was name was Mason. Now Mason lived somewhere here in Maine. He used to work for Country Kitchen. He don't want nothing to do with his mom. Hurts his grandmother real bad because, you know, but the grandma tried her best to get Mason back. She got four kids, four different fathers. Not saying anything wrong with that. But where I came, stepped into the picture, and this is where it started with us. Say she told her story. This is my time to tell her story. I stepped in. But she abused her mom. She took advantage of her mom. Her mother used to work at Clover Manor. She used to get up in the morning. She had to be at work at 7, work from 7 to 3. She walked. How far my house is for Clover Manor, out here on Manor Avenue? I have no idea where it is. It's at least uh, two or three miles. She walked two or three miles to work. Walked back from work. Monica used to tell me, she said, Tony, when I come on, I got to get my nap. I mean, she like, well, she, every day she was tired. The daughter stayed in bed until 12 o'clock because she was on welfare. She didn't have to work. She had different one boy after the next, you know, one boy right after the next. Well, she would knock on the door. Mom, I want you to keep, keep the kids from me. 
I'll be back in a couple of hours. So she leaves the, the kid with, with Monica. <laughs> then I will go by. Two hours, three hours. Now Monica is up with the kid. She got to be at work at freaking seven o'clock in the morning. She's going to get up at five, leave the house at six with no breakfast. She's stuck with the kids. Malenka dropped the kids off so she could have sex with her boyfriend. And she did it all the time. One time, Monica, Monica made $120 a week. She came and took Monica, what Monica took her bus for. And I, I, and I said, Monica, come on, I want to show you something. We are staying in an apartment on Main Street there. And right across from the apartment was a place called No Tomato. I saw her and John going in to get drinks with Monica money. Monica had to walk all week so she could take her freaking boyfriend out. So I stepped in. Now, y'all that don't know me, y'all hear what Monica fussing about. But if you notice, Monica is not just fussing about me. She's like talking about her life in Germany. Monica used to vent a lot. My wife got a lot of scars. A lot of scars. A lot. Uh, I, I used to step in. I used to stand up for her mom. I said, nope, she's not going to babysit the kids. Babysit your own kids. You have them, you take care of them. You ain't going to keep dumping them kids. Your mom just, your mom's going to get her nap. So she went and told mom that one time, you know, that I came from the box, I was scratching my balls one day. She said I was jerking off in front of her. She told her mom that, which was not true. I said, she would say anything to break us up. She don't have nobody now. Can't no man live with that woman. She's evil. She's mean. She's temperamental. And she's sleek as hell. She just robbed me. She flew in from freaking Hawaii when her mother first had a stroke. I thought she was concerned about her mom. That's what I thought. She came with her daughter, you know, and I had to go out of town. So I gave her the key to to uh, to my place, and I and I said, so you I can get a hotel. You can stay. You can stay here. I said I'll be gone for the weekend. I come back. All her mother jewelry is gone. All of her artwork is gone. Anything of value is gone. So I went to the Lewis the Police Department and told him, they said, well, Tony, where you made a mistake, you gave a key. He said, there's nothing we can do because you gave her the key. She just called, she just texted a letter to Monica Caseworker. Her mother been in the hospital for two years. Malenka have not called. She only came for one time to see her mom in two years. And that she came to steal whatever her mother had of value. That woman is so low, and I don't say mean things about people, that girl is so low, she could walk under a snake without bending over. Her name is Malenka Johnson. I got text messages on the phone. I showed her caseworker. Her caseworker said, it's a damn shame. She turned her back on her mom. I go to see Monica every day. Every day. Who asked that question? Uh, uh, 1980 Triumph. Ask him when was the last time that she, that, that Monica daughter picked up the phone to see how her mom is doing. When the last time she did something for her? Name one thing she did for her mom. Her mom in the hospital now worrying about her. Well, the tapes that she taped, I don't fight women. You ask my wife right now. If, if I get along with a woman, you know what I do? I leave. I leave the house. I try to talk to her. If, if I can't get through to her, I leave. Every conversation that Malenka taped. I was sitting on the porch. Chew my tobacco, drink my beer. And then when I hear the phone go click, I come back in. So she, Monica couldn't fight with me. So she would call her daughter and bitch to her daughter. Didn't bother me. I never knew what they were talking about because I didn't listen in. I'm not nosy. But when I get mad at my wife, I just walk away. I don't hit women. I don't fight with women. First of all, I don't like losing. <laughs> I don't like losing. I can't win a fight with my wife. So I, I would just 
walk away, let things cool down. Sometimes I used to think my wife used to pick a fight with me just for the hell of it. Because uh, after that conversation, what Malenka didn't know, after that conversation was all over with and everything, after she got through venting and getting it off her chest, me and her mom went and had some good sex. <laughs> she said she had her best sex after a fight, so. Makeup sex. That's, that's what good. I'm saying. I mean, I've been with my wife for 30 some years. Malenka left her mother when she was 16 years old. Never did nothing for her mom a day in her life. She's been living in Hawaii for 15 years. She lived in Hawaii for 15 years. Never thought about talking to her mom or doing anything for her mom. She ordered some damn Morella, them damn tape, just to just to hurt me and to hurt her mom. I let her mom listen to her. I shouldn't have, but I did. I want because I don't. We don't keep secrets between us. Made her mom cry. She said, "Why did my own daughter do that to me?" She said, "I confide in her. Every woman got another woman they confide in." You ask yourself, just like if I have an argument with my wife. I may go and talk to Larry about it. I don't expect Larry to tape every damn thing I'm saying, show it to my wife. That's a betrayal. Okay. She betrayed her mom. Her mother did that because her mother figured she could vent, tell her how she felt. And I pissed my wife off a lot. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not no angel. My wife got mad at me a lot of times. She probably will get mad at me in the future. But we never went to bed mad. And we still love each other. My wife been in the hospital for two years with a stroke. I go there every day. I go to the gym at five in the morning, sometimes six. I work at 10, 12. I grab a sandwich. I go set my wife at 10, six to seven o'clock every night. This girl turned her back on her mom. She turned her back on her kids. Everybody in Maine know who she is. She left bills for her mother to pay off to keep her out of jail. She don't care nothing about her mom. She just liked that control. She was in control of her mother. See, her mother had two kids. One named Ariana, who lives in Germany. That, that's her first child. But the father beat my wife up beat her up real bad, and dared her to take the kid away. So Ariana was raised. Now the other kid, Malenka, who is black, her father was black, but he also was a pimp and a thug. That's why Monica left New York and came up here for not only her safety, but for her child's safety. And she moved to Maine to protect this little evil-ass daughter of hers. And now she's on TV talking about how bad I am and I'm this and that. She don't even know me. And you ask my wife now. My wife said, I've always tried to be good to her. Always tried. I helped raise a kid. I babysit a kid for her. I bought her food and everything. She didn't even show up for our wedding. She can't keep no man. Can't no man live with that woman. Every man she got left, she's mean as shit. Now she's about 300 freaking pounds or even meaner. Because every fat cell she got on the body, the brain got mean with her too. Mean ass old big old black ass woman. Yeah, I'm going to tell you like I told her. She, she just doing it to hurt me and her mom. She tried to get me kicked out of the, the, the hospital where my, the rehab center. Tried to get me kicked out. And there's no, Monica got nobody here. No grandkid, no nothing. So if you get kicked me out of the hospital, who going to go visit Monica? I was at the hospital today changing my wife's diaper. Where's that damn daughter? I got one thing to say to Malenka Johnson. Screw you. And on that, would you like to go to the next one? Yeah, who's the next? This one's actually...